I'm going to show you how you can create a Superbase OAuth app to authenticate users against your Superbase organization. We're going to use an edge function to trigger this auth flow, allowing authenticated users to programmatically manage their projects. Sound good? Well then let's get into it. To create a new OAuth app, head over to the Superbase dashboard at app.superbase.com. From here, we can select the organization that we want our users to be able to authenticate with. I'm going to choose examples. And then under OAuth apps, we want to add an application. We're going to call our application projectly because we're going to be using it to select our projects. The website URL is going to be our functions URL. So this will be running locally. So that's HTTP colon slash slash localhost over port 54321. And then let's copy this from here because our authorization callback URL is going to be localhost over port 54321 slash functions slash v1 slash the name of our edge function. So this is also going to be projectly. We then need the path for our callback URL. So that's going to be slash OAuth slash callback. And then let's click confirm to create our OAuth app. This will generate a unique client ID and client secret. So let's make these available to our Superbase Edge function by creating a .env.local file and then populating it with our ID and secret. So let's copy our ID from here and then our secret from here. And so we can now serve our Superbase Edge function by running mpx Superbase functions serve, and then the name of our function, which is projectly. Since we'll be navigating to this function directly rather than using Superbase JS to invoke it, we want to set the flag for no dash verify dash JWT. We also need to tell it about our env file, which is at dot slash Superbase slash dot env dot local. And so let's have a look at what our edge function is actually doing. So that's under functions slash projectly slash index dot ts. You can see we're using the oak package, which is a router for Dino. So our single edge function can listen to different paths. We're also using cookies to make our access token available across all the different routes and a generic OAuth2 client, which we've configured with our OAuth client ID and our OAuth client secret from those environment variables we just set from Superbase. And we're giving it some URLs to handle redirection. So then we have this login route for Projectly. This triggers that OAuth flow with Superbase and gives us a unique code verifier, which we're making available to our next route using this session cookie. This flash part just means make it available once. And once we've used it for verification, delete it. We then redirect to our callback URL, which is just this route here. So this handles our verification, taking our code verifier and combining it with a unique auth code and exchanges them for our access token. So this kind of auth flow is called Pixie and is a more secure extension on the OAuth flow. We then set our access token to our session cookie, making it available to our other routes and then responding with successfully logged in. So basically our login route redirects to our callback route, which sets a cookie with our access token saying that we have authenticated. So let's navigate to our login route. So that's localhost over port 54321 slash functions slash v1 slash projectly slash login. And you'll see this has sent us through that OAuth flow where we can select our Superbase organization to grant API access. So we're going to grant it to examples and authorize projectly. Now we see successfully logged in. And if we open up the dev tools and go to application and then under cookies for localhost, we can see our session data cookie. So let's create a new route to query all of our organization's projects using Superbase's new management API. So back over in our application, we can create a new route for slash projectly slash all projects. This is then getting our access token out of our session cookie and then getting all of our projects by awaiting a fetch call to the Superbase API slash v1 slash projects. And we're passing along that access token as the authorization header. We're then stringifying that big blob of projects and sending it back as our responses body. So let's go back over to the browser and navigate to slash all dash projects. And we can see our ludicrously long list of example projects. Now Superbase's management API docs have a list of all the available routes and things that you can do with this API. For example, here is our slash v1 slash projects route, which gave us back this kind of shape of response. But if TypeScript is your preferred method of documentation, one of our awesome community members, Eric from trigger.dev, has built this wrapper around Superbase's management API called superbase-management-js and is 100% TypeScript, making working with these routes so much more convenient. So let's go back over to our project and import this at the top. And then down in our all projects route, we want to create a new client by calling new Superbase management API and passing it our access token. Now, rather than this big fetch call, which doesn't really give us any information about our projects, we can just await a call to client. And because this is TypeScript, we can then introspect all the available methods for our client 
And so we wanted to get our projects. And so we can just call this one function. And now we know the exact shape that each one of our projects is going to have. So if we only care about our project's ID and its name, rather than returning all of our projects, we could map over each project and then construct a new object where our ID is set to project.id and our name is set to project.name. And since we now have proper type safety, we can see that projects is possibly undefined. So we can use optional chaining to only map over it if it's an array. And now if we go back to the browser and navigate to our all projects route, we'll see we're now only getting back our ID and name, making our ludicrous number of projects a little bit less problematic. Once you've built some awesome Superbase tooling, why not come and showcase it on the Superbase marketplace so others can benefit from it too? And while you're here, check out some of the other community integrations to connect Superbase to your favorite tools. Now, a lot of this demo was done running Superbase locally, and this barely scratches the surface of why this workflow is so awesome. I recommend you check out this video right here, where we step through this local development workflow, committing any changes made to your Superbase instance to Git so they can live alongside the rest of your project's code. This is a crucial step when collaborating with others and makes this process seamless. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.